There have been almost 50 different scientific studies published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature examining the presence of DMT, 5-methoxy-DMT or bufotenin in biological fluids in humans. Of these studies, 33 have specifically looked for DMT, and, and it has been found in uh, blood, in urine, and in uh, cerebral in cerebral, it has been found in cerebral spinal fluid as well. 5-methoxy DMT has also been found in blood, urine, and cerebral spinal fluid. And bufotenin has been found consistently in uh, human uh, blood and urine. There have yet to be measurements of these compounds in any other uh, tissues in humans. And so exactly what their distribution is in the brain, exactly how they are regulated uh, in their synthesis and then degradation remains unknown. But we, uh, it leaves a great deal of speculation uh, for us to design experiments to go forward with understanding these particular aspects of these molecules. As I, I mentioned, the, knowing the metabolism of these compounds is very important. The compounds are metabolized to an inoxide, which is very polar and can be readily excreted in urine, but has yet to be measured in human urine or blood. Although it's known that this metabolite is a major metabolite, no study to date, none of the 47 different studies that have examined the presence of these compounds in humans has looked at these metabolites. And it would be important to know this because when DMT is administered, a very small portion, less than 2%, is excreted unchanged. So the question is, where's the other 98%? Well, it's in metabolites, and we need to measure those metabolites. Other metabolites are tryptamine itself, uh, in methyltryptamine, and the beta carboline alkaloids. The most abundant metabolite is indole acetic acid, where the ethylamine side chain, with its two methyl groups, is removed from the molecule by oxidation, producing indole acetic acid. Well, it'd be important to measure that as well. It, it unfortunately doesn't lend itself to correlation with much of anything because a great deal of tryptophan can also be converted into this molecule, and it can come from a number of other sources other than strictly DMT. So measuring these other metabolites will give us a broader picture of how much is actually being made in the body and how much then is being excreted. Unfortunately, today we have to measure these compounds in peripheral blood and in urine samples. Urine sample, a urine sample is a concentrate of the body's total water. And we have a greater opportunity to actually detect these compounds and measure them in a urine sample. But unfortunately, we can't do pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamic studies based on urine levels. Blood levels are more relevant, particularly when we administer a drug. But here we're looking at an endogenous compound that may be being synthesized, secreted, acting, and then being eliminated in discrete cell groups within the brain or in other tissues in the body. And exactly what our peripheral measurements have to do with that cannot be established at this point because we're not looking at the entire picture. Dr. Strassman has proposed that the pineal gland is the seat of these compounds and that the pineal gland's position in the brain and ability to release this compound uh, into uh, areas of the brain that control uh, a great deal of our perception in terms of auditory and visual uh, perception. Uh, can explain uh, perhaps a number of different hallucinatory type episodes or perception, uh, changes in perception that may occur under different physiological states. And unfortunately, we have not yet measured uh, these compounds in the pineal gland. There's yet to be a study that's actually looked at pineal levels of DMT or 5-methoxy DMT or bufotenin. The important thing about this proposal, though, this hypothesis by Dr. Strassman, is that it's readily testable. 
Uh, we can measure pineal in cadaver uh, tissues. We can isolate uh, the pineal from other animal species and examine whether or not these compounds are produced there. We can look for the enzymes that are responsible for its synthesis. We can characterize that enzyme, look for the gene that may be responsible for the uh, upregulation or downregulation of the mRNA that is produced to transcribe the protein that creates this compound. And of course, look for the compounds themselves. Uh, if we can fi find this in other animal species, we can then look at changes in physiological state that may also uh, allow us to make determinations about some of other uh, the other pro make determinations about some of the other proposals that Dr. Strassman has made about its role and function in the regulation of perceptual experiences.